Hello all, Jamie Rogers here from Craft Mania, and today I'm bringing you a brand new bundle of something that's actually blowing my mind. I have a feeling we're going to have a bit of time together today because I'm addicted to playing with this and I think we're going to be here for a while while I share lots and lots of techniques and ideas with you. But before we talk about today's bundle, please make sure that you've gone and tapped on the subscribe bar and that you go and tick the bell so that you get notified of our future videos because we would hate for you to miss out on anything. As you can see here at Craft Mania, we are bringing you lots of offers, lots of content, lots of techniques, lots of ideas, and we don't want you to miss a single thing. Now, obviously, if you're watching on our Facebook channel or any of our social media and you haven't already, then please make sure you're liking our pages too because we share all of our content there and it's another good way to make sure you don't miss a thing. Now today we are talking about, and I'd like to insert a little drum roll here to be honest, Mixed Media Plates by John Next Door. Now I don't know if you've ever heard of these or if you've ever seen them, and being honest with you, I knew of them, we stocked them, and I was like, oh, I think I just lived under a rock a little bit, because I thought this was just like a version of a jelly plate, and I honestly thought it was like John's version of a jelly plate. It's not at all. It's really not. They're mixed media plates. They're a completely different game. Now, I know John says not to refer to them like a stamp, but to me, in my little head, that's how I understand them. So I will refer to them and talk to you about them in that format. They're like a blank stamp that you can add to. You can bring in your inks. You can stamp on top of them. You can stencil on top of them. They're so much fun and it's so addictive. And the results are amazing. To me, they look like items I've got out of sheets of, of paper, out of a paper pad. They're, they're, they're that quality. They've got that many levels, that much depth. And if you don't like it, just add more to it. And that's one of the beauties of these. And I'll share with you how to use them and what to do with them. And I've got lots of samples. But just to give you a little overview quickly, we have got the large rectangle frame. We have got the circle. Now, you can buy all of these individually if you wish to, or you can buy them all in one big bundle. We have got the square. We have got the oval and we have got the A5 plate. Now, don't worry about this one looking black and all of these being clear. I'll talk to you about that in a second. But this is your complete bundle. Now, the offer price for this is only $39.99. It should be £50 and a few pennies, if I remember rightly. So you're saving about 20%, and fractionally over 20%, to be honest with you. So $39.99 will give you all five of these. Now, we see this with the diffuser plates when we launch those. We see this with the Mica Magic when we launch those. We see this with the 2J stamps when we launch these. These are going to sell out, and I predict very, very quickly. And we're going to be chasing around for days trying to get hold of these. If you know what these are, if you've seen them before, or if you just want to skip ahead a couple of minutes and see how to use them, go and order them because they're going to fly and we're going to struggle to keep up with this all week i can tell you that now because when you see them in use they are amazing they're going to change every stamp you have in your stash already and you are going to create brand new effects with them so it's not only about buying something new it's about revitalizing what you've already got every single stamp you have already is going to have a new use with it especially your pictures especially your flowers you're going to bring them into these brand new game same with your stencils so i'll show you how to use them if you're new to us and you've not shopped with us before you might not know where to find us or how we work it's all very simple pop onto our website www.craftmaniacrafts.com on the bar that runs across the top if you're on a desktop or on the little um, square with the little dashes in it or if you're on a mobile device it will give you a menu in either place and on there will be one that says YouTube. If you click that, it'll take you through to a page and we do little boxes for every YouTube video that we've done throughout 2024. Click on the relevant box, so in this case, the mixed media plates, and it will take you through to a page with everything on it that I'm going to be talking to you about. Now, we've got brayers, we've got ink pads, we've got stencils, we've got loads of different bits. Everything will be on that page somewhere for you to be able to find. At Craft Mania, we stock over 10,000 items, and it can be a nightmare if I send you off looking for, little sneaky peek, a bee. Don't do it. Go look on that page. The bee will be on that page for you. Now, again, how we work here at Craft Mania is we don't like to charge you P&P &P unless we really, really, really have to, because of the last thing you want to be doing is spending money on something that you don't actually get anything for. So anytime you spend over £5, if you live in the UK, your P&P is completely free. Completely free. So £5, P&P free. 
If you live internationally, we sadly do have to charge you a little bit, but we keep it as minuscule as we can. It is capped at just £10. If we find your PMP cheaper than that, then we'll actually refund the difference for you. But being honest with you, that is very, very rare, given the high cost of PMP now around the world. If it's more than £10, here at Craftmania, we pay that for you. I know, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? We will pay your PMP for you over £10. So the most you pay is £10, and you can get these products to you anywhere in the world. Now, the other thing I'm going to highlight today is your brayer. Now, this isn't added to your bundle because we know many of you may already have a brayer. I don't think as many of you are going to have these. So instead, we're going to do the boat brayer as a separate item that you can go on and purchase if you wish to. But it does, of course, have a saving to it. And it is an essential item for you to be using, of course, with your media plates. And I will show you why. So let's jump on in and have a little look at how these work and all the fun things you can be doing with them. So let's start off by having a little look for our plate, shall we? So the first one we have here is our circle. Now these ones are approximately five and a half inch squares. Then we've got our square one, which again, five and a half inch squares. Then we go on to our rectangle ones and we've got our rectangle frame here. This one's five and a half inches by seven inches to give you a rough size idea. Same with the oval. And then our last one is our A5 plate. Now you might see the black on this one and wonder why this one is black versus all of the other ones being clear. Being honest with you, I'm not too sure why that is, but it isn't actually the plate that's black. It is just the packaging. A bit like when you receive new stamps, they come on an acetate backing sheet. This is the same. So we have our black sheet in there, which is the bit we're going to take away, and you will be left with your clear plate ready for you to work with. Now, all of your plates are then, of course, clear, and they're all going to come to you in this format. Now, when it comes to taking your plates off of the acetate, these are actually cut on the acetate, which is a slightly different method to how traditional clear stamps are made. So there is a slight resilience to taking them off the sheet. If you struggle at all, put them into some hot water and apparently the plates will come away and then you'll be able to just use them freely. I personally didn't struggle much. I was just careful and I found that I could pull these away with no damage to my actual mixed media plates. But if you're worried, if you're finding resilience, hot water here is your friend. Now, what I wouldn't have predicted I'd be telling you with these is once you've taken them out of the pack, the best thing for you to do is start screwing them up and sort of forming them and playing with them. By doing this, you're going to add the oils from your skin onto the plate and condition them ready to take your inks and actually work with. Now, like a clear stamp, same sort of story, when they're made, they have a coating on them and we can do quite a few techniques to take that coating away or we can stamp with things like archival and then break the stamp in that way. With our mixed media mats, it's all about adding that oil from your skin to them. And actually having a bit of grit and a bit of dirt on here doesn't hurt. That's why you're going to notice I haven't overly scrubbed my plates. You'll find this as we go through them. I leave them relatively coloured or inked in whatever I'm working with. Unless I want to go in with a lighter colour, then I will worry about taking it away. Or if I don't want to damage what I'm putting onto them. Now you can wash them with just ordinary water. Of course, this is going to depend a lot on the inks you're using with them. But actually, I tend to use a stamp cleaner for cleaning anything along from my tools, my scissors, my mats, everything. Um, but I'm nearly out. I don't know if you can see that. I'm very nearly out. and I'm saving this for my desk in my craft room. I've got to get another one from the shop. But don't worry, we've got them in stock. I just keep forgetting to add them to my order. But it's a great cleaner. It even gets the foam tape stuff off of my scissors and all of the mess off of everything really. I love this stuff, it's like magic in a bottle. Now going back to your plates. So once we've got your plate, it's down to you how you wish to use it. And there are several different ways we can use it. We can use it directly onto our desk like so, or again, why I sort of refer to these as stamps, is we can use them in our stamp presses. And we can bring them in, we can put them down on the lid here, on the top and then you can stamp with them just like you would a traditional stamp. This is why in my head I have to compartmentalise these things and I see these very much as a blank stamp but I do know it's a different material, it is a slightly different compound so it isn't quite that but in my head that's my justification. Now we will move on to showing you techniques in the stamp press. I've got so much to share with you and I know that I'm going to get caught up. I'm going to be honest, you're going to see my fingers are very inky and slightly stained. I've already filmed this video once. 
I've already done it once. I've done all of the sections for it and then found I had no sound whatsoever. So I'm back refilming it again. Um, but it does mean I'm slightly inky. So bear that in mind when I start waffling because I ain't got a clue what I've told you once already on what I haven't. And it's always very tricky when you refilm something to remember what was in the first version and what's now in the second or is in my head. So we'll see how we get on. But playing with our plates is all about different inks, or I've been experimenting with my inks, I should say, and I've been using quite a few different brands and types. So these are just a few of the things that I've seen you can use and the ones that I've been using with them, but give it a try. You know, if you would stamp a stamp with it, you could try it on your mixed media plate, see how you get on. The worst you're going to lose is a piece of card. But through my experiments and through my samples, you're going to see a lot of distress oxides, a lot of distress inks, a lovely Simon Hurley dye inks, a versifying clairs, and down my Mento inks all come into play at different places, mostly being depicted down to the colours I've got. It's not particularly that one reacts differently or does something differently. It's more for me, it's more about the colours that I wanted to be working with. So let's have a play then, shall we? Let's bring these in. Now, the first video I did, as I say, went on for hours because I got very carried away and was talking on and on and on about this and just falling in love with it. And I feel like I've got to be careful this time round. I can't keep you here for quite as long. So we're gonna, not that you can see the first one because it has no sound whatsoever and has now been deleted, which is always frustrating, but never mind, these things happen. So as you can see, I'm going in with just a few shades here of our lovely Simon Hurley inks. So we've got Slippery When Wet, we've got Crown Meat, and we've got Beasting. And we're just adding these down. Now the joy of a brayer, and this is just one of the joys of a brayer with these plates, is that we can bring this in and we can work this together and we can blend our colours. And that will give us this lovely soft hue when we come to take our print from this. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of card. Now I'm gonna be working with coconut white card. Um, but you could, again, card choices down to yourselves, depending on what kind of effect you would like to create. So we're going to take that down now. And now I've got ink on my brayer. So we'll clear off my brayer at the same time. And we'll transfer this over the back here. And we're going to add down some pressure. Now, you can just apply pressure with your hands. But being honest with you, my desk is very high up in the air so that it's nice and close to the camera. But it does mean that me applying pressure is a bit of a problem because being honest with you, I'm short, so it's hard to apply pressure sort of nine foot in the air. Now, when we take that away, look at what we've created. Isn't that gorgeous? When we look into the texture in here and the colours and the blend, now I could have easily been blending with smoothies and blending tools, and so I could never have got that texture. I could never have got that soft blend of that lovely red, that bee sting going through here. Look at the way that yellow is layering on top of that purple. That to me is just absolutely gorgeous. And that's just one of the ways that we can blend a background and work with it. If we do something similar, so we'll leave this down and we're gonna bring in our slippery and wet again. Now, if you were worried you could clean off in between because of I might get a bit of color on my pad here, you can always take a second print. That's a good way to clear off your mixed media plate. But for speed, we're gonna take the bee sting uh, sorry, slippery when wet, and we're going to add that down over the plate. Now, this is a technique I really liked. We're going to bring in a stencil. Let's go for this one. This is one of my favourites. This is one by Sam Paul, and we're going to lay that down on the top here, and we're going to bring in our brayer, and we're just going to take that across the top here. Now, you're going to find that you're taking the ink off onto the stencil from our plate. And you can see that there's now ink on the back of the stencil. And we can take a print off of this. So I'll leave that to one side for a second. We're going to bring in our piece of card again. And we're going to lay that over the top. Now, don't forget with this being an A5 plate, if we wanted to, and this isn't the best time for me to mention this because I'm not setting it up for it at all. But you could do this as the front of your card blank. This could be the front of this piece of A4 that we then score and fold to make our actual card. Now, can you see that texture coming through just by playing around with that stencil, just by lifting that off of the top? You've got that really cool, elegant texture in there. We can see that flower coming through or them leaves coming through. We can see all of the little pops in there as well. And it just gives depth to what we're doing. 
But this is just a couple of the bits we can do. Let's bring in, and we'll leave that down there actually. Let's bring in another stamp. And we'll go on to one of the frames in a second. But I do like to share this with you. So this is one of the stamps that we bought you in the 2Js bundle at the beginning of the year. I think it was early January, if I remember rightly. But my memory is never very good. But we did bring this to you a little while ago. And um, they sold out incredibly well. And I do like to do this on a video. I know lots of you have got this stamp. So it's quite nice to bring it back and show you ways that you can now get a completely different effect out of it. And this is what I said in the intro. To me, these plates are all about taking something you've already got and making brand new effects with it. So by literally stamping down on top here, we can make our own patterns, we can make our own frames, we can make our own backgrounds, we can create a style or make a background that you never imagined you would be able to do with the stamp that you already own. And this is something I love because it just means you've got better value for money. We're taking items we have already and creating new items with them. And at the end of this video or throughout this video, I'll show you lots of different creations just with this one stamp. And to me, that blows my mind to think that something I already had in my stash can now be bought in and used in a completely new fashion. And we found this with the diffuser plates when we launched those. That I think it, it opened up a world for your embossing folders that you didn't think was possible. It showed you a way that you could use them that you never imagined. And I feel this is going to do the same for your stamps that those plates did for your embossing folders. Because it literally takes everything you own, all the ink, all the stamps, gives you a new world to explore. So we'll bring this in and we'll place that down on top of here. And again, we will bring in our brayer. And this is why I think a brayer is really important because we can really apply our pressure and get that image. Please excuse my fingertips, leaving little prints, but do you know that that's fine. Never worried about something like that. We can cover up anything if we need to, but of course this is the reverse to our project. Now look at how beautiful that is. I've bought paper pads. I've designed paper pads that look similar to this. Now we've got that yellow going on in the background, haven't we? We've got our flowers that we've added on in here already. And we've got that all coming together. But we could add more to this. We could add in our verse. We could build up on top of that. We could play with that further. Now obviously, because I'm taking a print off of the plate in this sense, I've not got as much pressure as I would have if I was to be doing this in a stamp press. So let's take this one out of the way for a second and go on to one of our frame stamps instead, or one of our frame mixed media plates, I should say. So we'll bring in our stamp press, we'll load this down on the side here, and this of course is our lovely rectangle, and we're gonna start off with this one by bringing back that same stamp, and we'll bring in the same ink, and we'll add that over the top. And I just wanna show you how we can create different effects building in different ways. So we'll bring that stamp in, let's start over here, We'll put that down and then I'm going to move the stamp just off to the edge of my block so I can get round the stamp press because if not I'm going to struggle to get down this side where the spine is. So I'm going to add that one in there and you could stop this at any stage. You don't have to do all of it if you don't want to. You might look at this and think well actually I just want to highlight a couple of corners or a couple of pieces. It certainly doesn't have to be the whole thing. Let's add in a little flower at the top there. I'm going to add one over that side, just filling in that edge. We're going to come down here. I'm going to pick up some more ink. Now I do like these versifying clearings. And this is quite a nice time to point out, obviously. You could be using, like these, your versifying clearings, a wetter ink that means you could emboss over the top afterwards. So if you want to bring in your embossing powders once you've stamped this, as long as we're quick, as long as it's still wet, there's no reason why you can't. You could be using your embossed inks, you could use your pigment inks. It's really down to you. So we'll just do those little bits there. We'll put the ink pad lid back on before I end up with a stamp on the arm, which isn't intentional. We'll bring in a piece of card and we'll place that down there. Now the frames are really good as well because I do keep forgetting to do this. But you can put down your magnets in the middle there. So when you bring this over, you've got that whole framed area masked off, ready for you to go in and add that down. Now, this is one of the bits I love because we go again back to this idea of we started with a relatively small stamp, but yet we've taken this on board and we have now created a really beautiful frame with it. 
Now, as I mentioned, I'm sort of quite short against my counter, but actually I'm really happy with that. That's beautiful. Isn't that a stunning frame that we've created? Now, a couple of different points for this, and this is why I wanted to start off at this stage. If there's any bits I've missed, of course, I'm in a stamp press. I can go back, I can apply that pressure, bring in them details where I need to. Another thing we can do is we can take this and we'll bring back in our ink pad for a second. We can take our ink and we can go against the edge here of the plate. And this is because it's a really rigid, sort of stiff plate. They're a bulky plate. They're a good quality plate. It means that we can just highlight them edges and we can add in that little bit of texture, that little bit of a frame. We can, if we want to, even go round the middle and you can add in just that little frame we can do this with the edge if we want, but we can add on that frame so that we have that little stamped piece going around there. Now, if anywhere you've got a, a more messy bit that you don't like, then you can go in and clean that off, of course. But if you're happy with it, carry on. Another thing we could do, and I'm, this would ruin what we're doing, but I'm going to share with you. You could take this and you can start building up patterns. So maybe if you're like me and you love a lovely lattice design, there's no reason why you can't take that and add in some depth and texture along them lines so we'll take that and we'll place that down give that a good push and see what we've created so not only have we added that sort of distress frame around the edges here we've also added in our pattern at the top and this is just about giving you ideas really just about creating new thoughts for you now if we wanted Again, we could go in and we could clean this stamp off. Now I'm just doing this with a paintbrush because I can go in, I can put the water exactly where I want it to be, which when I'm filming can be quite handy so I don't end up misting all over my desk. I'm gonna bring in just a towel. I'm gonna take that away. I'm doing this because I'm gonna add a lighter color to the top of the plate. And this is what I like. It's about building up layers. So where we started off, where we're on coconut white card with our navy, if we looked at this and thought, well, actually, I really wish I'd put colour in there. Bring in the colour. Take your ink pad, go around your panel, add that down. If you wish to, go over the top of your brayer, soften that down slightly, make sure it's nice and blended in. We can always add in more coats, and that's something to remember. The stamp hasn't moved, the card hasn't moved, so we can go back. We can add down that lovely slippery and wet, bright yellow to go in with that navy. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Now, I know we've sort of got different styles going on here, but it's a really lovely way to show how you could build that up. Now, again, and I'm not saying you're going to do this at all with this design because I think we've gone far enough. Actually, we have. So let's move on to the next one. We'll take that plate out. We'll take this panel out and we'll do this on the next one. So let's go back to another one of our frames. Let's play here with the circle. So we're going to bring down the circle. I'm going to place that one on. We're going to find some ink. Let's go for, let's go for Tattered Rose this time. This is a lovely oxide ink. Now, talking of oxide inks, a little um, update for you. We're quite low on our oxide inks on the website at the moment. We're just waiting for our supplier to get more in. Um, we're ready to order them, but sadly, they haven't got all of the colours. But hopefully all of our distress oxides and distress inks will be topped up shortly. But if you do have a little look on there, they are reduced currently to $5.99, which is why they've been selling like wildfire. Because don't forget, of course, you get free PMB on that as well. Um, but there, there is quite a few sold out, being honest with you. So just bear that in mind. But they are great to work with. We're then going to bring in one of our stencils. I'm going to place that down over the top. This is one of my cherry blossom stencils. We're then going to get some ink and we're going to go for a fired festive berry, sorry festive berries and we're going to pick that up with our tool and we're going to hold on to our stencil and this isn't about taking away from our stencil like we did with the brayer earlier this is about adding more in and we can always if we do take too much away in the areas under the actual stencil we can always add another color again we've just shown you how to do that you can reapply ink and then take that across and stamp with that again but this time we're adding ink through the stencil around the frame. Now I hope by now you're sitting at home and seeing all of the different things, thinking of all of the different ways you're going to be bringing these 
into your crafting because I was just mind blown, genuinely mind blown. I was like, there is so many products I want to play with with these, so many bits I want to do with them. And then we can take that, we can push that down. Now look at that, isn't that elegant? We go back in a big circle, don't we, to things that we would buy. If that was printed in a pad, already cut round the edges, printed in a pad, and you had a series of these, that lovely subtle finish, I'd happily buy them. I'd be really chuffed to buy that in a paper pad. I would use that time and time again. But I don't have to buy a paper pad. I can do it with the things I've already got. All we bought into this was our mixed media plate, our stencil, and a couple of inks. Now, talking of things we've already got, and we're going to go back a stage, let's talk about something else we can do with these. We can, of course, and we've been doing it, but you might not have noticed. We can reverse a stamp. So I'm going to bring in my A5 plate. We're going to place that down this side of the stamp press. And we're going to bring in the stamp that we wish to be using, and we're going to place this over this side. We're going to place a piece of paper under it, just while we ink it, so it's nice and clean for me to remove. And we're going to bring in our Shady Lane Versifying Clearing. And we're going to go over the top of the stamp, making sure that that's nice and stamped and juicy, ready for our impression. Now, don't mind if it's moving at this point, because we're going to set it in place in just a second. We're going to take away our paper, so that we don't have that to contend with. And we're going to put our stamp down. We're then going to go to our mixed media plate. And we're going to bring that over. And we're going to pick up an impression on the top here with our stamp so that we've got that nice and pushed down, nice and beautiful image, this gorgeous lighthouse being transferred onto here. We can then take away our stamp and we've got that lovely look there ready. Now this ink is still wet, it is still juicy, and that means that we can now transfer that image onto our next piece of card. So we're gonna bring this in, we're gonna place that down. Now I'm just gonna move my mat over just slightly so that it's not on the spine, because I could see it was just touching the spine of the board when I was doing that impression. So I'll move it over just a smidge, and then we can bring that down. Oh, I forget, my magnets aren't very good in this one, so we'll take that one out. We can bring that down, and we can give that a good firm push. Now again, little disclaimer, I'm short, my count is very high, so I'm giving this a good little push, but it might not be quite as crisp as I could get it if it wasn't quite as high as it is up in the air at the moment. But we'll give that a nice push down, see how we get on. I need to get one of them stamping press tools. We sell them, it's another thing I need to put on my list to, to take from the store or buy from the store. But now you can see we have our lighthouse stamped. Now if I bring this one in, this is the original direction for the lighthouse. If we just took the stamp and we just printed it down onto a piece of card, that's what we would end up with. So we've literally flipped that lighthouse. Now a lighthouse probably isn't an image that you're gonna to wanna to do this with, but if you've got a picture of a swan maybe, and you want two swans to be kissing for Valentine's or a wedding, this would work brilliantly. Maybe you've got a little butterfly and you want it to be on different sides, or you've got a picture stamp and you wanna flip it over. Maybe your sentiment is really large and swirly and you want that to sort of come down in a different area to what you could achieve with it facing this way. It's just another joy and technique that we can do by playing around with these um, lovely stamping plates. Now, again, this might be a different idea for you. How about creating your frames with them and again, using that stamp to transfer over? So if we take these two out of the way, and I did one of these on the first version, and I really liked it, because I like that sort of nautical style and feel. So I wanted to share this one with you as well. We're gonna go for the oval frame this time. We're gonna bring in the Remember Me ink, and we're gonna go all the way over the top, so we've got a nice blue background to it. We're then gonna bring back in our Lighthouse stamp, because that's the one that I was using, and one I really like. And this is sort of similar to some of the bits I've shown you, but again, just possibly gives you a different idea on what you could be creating. And I'm just wiping off some of that green ink off of my stamp, just so I don't um, sort of contaminate my blue. I'm gonna add this back onto my block, and I am gonna find, which I have hidden, here it is, our lovely Twilight Versa Fine Claire. I'm gonna add that down onto here and we're gonna bring this in and we're gonna stamp this 
going just over here onto the edge of our oval. Now one of the bits I love with the oval and the rectangle frame is how you've got slightly larger edges which gives you that ability to infill with a picture like this and to extend that up there. We're then going to bring in our French script stamp. Now this is one of my favourites. Now we are reversing what we're stamping so anytime we're using scripts and wording we do need to be careful. If it's one that should be able to be readable we don't want to print it the wrong way and then find that we can't read it. Um, but with this French script, I can't read French anyway, so it doesn't make too much difference to me. But if you're worried, then, you know, don't use scripts, use your pictures, use your backgrounds, use your lattices, use the different bits that you've got in this style of stamp for you to build up. Now, we've added that little bit of script going around the sides here. We're then going to do the same technique again. We're going to come around the edges and we're just going to darken these down. Just adding that around the sides, just softening that in where needed. Oh, I've gone across in a diagonal there for some reason, but never mind. We'll call that C. And we'll do a bit around the side here as well. Again, just adding some bits in. I'm not too worried how perfect this is. It's all about texture, it's all about depth. And then we're going to bring in a piece of card. We again can put our magnets in where the ovals are going to be. And then we can bring that over just slightly down a bit. There we go. We can give that a good firm press. Now, if you want to add more, again, just like we did, we can do. We can bring in more items. We could do a bit of stenciling now onto this card and bring that in. Anywhere we've missed again, just go back and apply some more pressure. But actually, I think that's really lovely. For, you know, we often talk about the struggle to do masculine cards. How easy is this? You've got your card ready to just place a sentiment in the middle and all we did was bring in a script and a lighthouse and a couple of different shades of blue and we're already on to having a really beautiful panel. Now you could add in some seagulls in the air here if you wanted. You of course could add your verse into the middle if you want or you could have a picture in there. You could cut that out with a die if you prefer and add something in there. But to me that's a really lovely looking panel that is a created purposely through these frames and that's to me why I really need them. Now another idea we can do, we can take our ink and we're going to go with this one because it's on here and it's got this shade already and we're going to add down lots of ink. Now I'll be honest with you this is quite funny or it was for me, it probably won't be when I tell you, but when I was doing these, when I got them out of the pack, they weren't something that I expected they were, I thought they were similar to a gel press and I started playing with them doing gel press techniques and I was like, mm, this ain't really working. So I need to watch a video to see what I'm doing wrong because if there's, there's many things that sort of go past me and I don't know what they are and how they work. And I thought, well, I'll watch a video. So I had a little look and I found a lovely video with John on um, YouTube that I could watch and I'd recommend you go find them. John does some amazing videos. If you search John next door, mixed media plates, you'll find them too. Um, but some interesting videos doing different techniques. And while he was on and I was watching him, I was playing around and, and doing some different bits. And um, I sat there doing this technique and I thought, oh my goodness, I've come up with something that nobody has ever thought of. This is new, this is fresh, this is exciting. And just as I finished my first version of it, John went on and did it. And I thought, oh, typical. Um, there's that idea gone out the window as being new and fresh, but it doesn't matter. It's all about the technique and how fun and easy they are to create. And this is one of them that I really wanted to share with you because it's a great use again for your stamps. So I'm going to bring in this stamp, this lovely flower. And we're going to start stamping this down and we're going to take away the ink that we create. Now this is another technique that I wasn't really planning on showing you actually, is how you could use these as an ink pad. You could blend your own inks onto here, you could create an ink pad with it and you can stamp from there to your piece of paper. Now I'm not stamping this to use the stamped image, I'm trying to create the effect on the frame that I want. And we might just do this up one side for speed because I'm quite conscious of time. So we'll do round here and we'll just do one side of it. We'll take that one off of there. Now by taking the ink away and stamping it off onto a piece of paper, what we have done is we have removed the ink in the pattern of the stamp all the way around that frame. So when we come to apply the pressure from this and we stamp this down, we will create what looks similar to like an engraved effect. So we'll place that down, place that on, give that some pressure. And I say engraved, I suppose I mean more like a lino cut style. 
because it looks like we've engraved a pattern into here. And obviously we haven't, it's just where the stamp has removed that ink for us. And to me, that's again a really game-changing style that we could create out of stamps we've already got. And this is the bit I can't really get across enough. It's about creating brand new results with items you've already got in your stash. But how lovely is that? How luxurious? Again, it's another one of them techniques, I think, that looks a bit like wallpaper, like posh wallpaper. And then you could build up some flowers around this side, add in a sentiment or two, and you've got a really lovely finish. And I'll share with you some cards I've made with this idea. So these are some of the samples that I did in take one of this video, uh, which you didn't get to see, but I thought it might be nice for you to see the panels that I created. So this one again is some stenciling, we've got some of our lovely Distress Oxide inks going on here, Festive Berries, Tattered Rose, and then we've got that Remember Me from the Simon Hurley inks coming on here. This one was a frame that I stamped on the A5 plate using the prize ribbon inks. This was another smaller version of that lovely like lino cut style I was sharing with you. This one again is one where we stamped it and I added some inks to it. I did a bit of water spritzing over the top of it. This was the first version of my lighthouse and thankfully you didn't get to see this one being made because it does look a little bit like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. But you know what, that's fine and could easily be leveled out. And then we also have another frame here as well. Let's get it the right way up. And uh, on this frame, we've done some stamping. We've brought in our script. We've brought in our stencil as well. And they were just a few of the bits that I did on the video that you're not going to get to see, sadly. But hopefully we covered a lot of them techniques in this video. Now, going to actual samples for our each plate as such. I've done three samples per one. And if we start off here looking at our oval plate, these are the ones that I wanted to share with you. So this one, again, we're using the slippery when wet in the background. We've gone on with that lovely sample stencil and used the prize ribbon ink, stamped with the prize ribbon ink as well. And this is quite nice because quite often when we've been talking about stamping with the stamps to create frames, I've been stamping in from the edges going around it. But don't forget you can stamp out from the middle. So you can create that sort of masked off area by stamping around from the edge. Think of all of the stamps you've got, all of the different flower stamps you've got, all of the different pattern stamps you've got that you could be doing that with. Then we've got our lovely bees. Now our bees actually launched last week on our Sizex video. If you haven't seen that yet, we have very limited stock on the bundle and very limited stock actually on several of the Sizex items. So much so that we've already had another order arrive and I don't know if that's gonna be live yet. That might not be up yet, but there, you can go check out the website, look under the new section. But we've got Sizex glue guns, glue sticks, glue stands, shrink plastic um, like tools, uh, glue gun tools, shrink plastic in rose gold, in gold. We've got gilding flakes from Sizex coming, uh, Tim Holtz dies, Stacey Park dies, sticky sheets. There's about 30 new Sizex items added a newer than what we launched with you last week, as well, of course, as the ones from last week too. So yeah, check out the website under new if you've not seen all that lot. Moving on to this card, same idea again, but playing with our greens and our blues, stamping around the frame here, bringing in that ink to stencil over the top of it, added on our flowers again from the Sizzex release. And these are the wings which come with the fairy. I'll show you the fairy shortly, but they have been put together to make it look a little bit like a butterfly landing in the flowers, which I thought was quite a nice idea. Then onto this one. This one I've done my stamping around the oval frame, obviously. Stamped it down using the Shady Lane ink, and then I've painted it in. And I've chose to paint this one in with our Nova watercolour paint sets. We've got a video on these. If you've not seen these, this is something you might want to add to your order. If I remember rightly, and don't quote me on this, I think these are $5.99 by memory. I should know, I filmed the video, but still, memory like a sieve. But in here, you've got a water brush, which comes with it. You've got a paintbrush which comes with it and you've got all your watercolour paints and I've seen similar sets like this retail well up to 30 odd pounds literally and this one is reduced to only 5 99 but we do have limited stock of these. I'm sure it's 5 99 but again check out the page on the website um, under YouTube you'll find the video for this there you'll find the product in that section and I'll also put this product in with today's video section too so you can see it but even the palette has a little finger holder on the reverse so you can take this out and paint with it on the go. I just love these. Then the other bit I haven't mentioned is the dies here in the middle. This is a bit of a sneaky. 
We're doing a die of the week at the moment each week. This is launching on Monday. This is just one part of it, and they're launching on Monday. I'll show you the other parts in a moment, but they won't be out till Monday, so you might want to order them again. But don't forget, free PMP over five pounds. So even if you wait till Monday to order them, it's not the end of the world. But do get your order in for your plates now, because I think we're going to struggle to keep up with these. Now moving on to your square one, again five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Bringing these in, we can see the most beautiful effects. This one's been blended using these three colours, if I remember rightly. We've got the Lilac Posies, the Teal Zeal, and the Danube Blue from the Memento collection using these little, um, I forget what they call these, what do they call these? Not pet links, are they? I forget what they're called now. Teardrops? Teardrop inks? Oh, I don't know. But these little inks, which are a great way to build up a colour family uh, very inexpensively, because they're really not very expensive, and they're great for blending. So I've taken them, I've put them round my mixed media plate, I've brayed over the top to match them in, I've stamped round them with the script and the flower, and then I've used the ink pad, like I show you, to go round the edges and add in a few lines. The bit in the middle, this is quite nice to mention, actually, the butterfly. I wanted the same sort of tones. I cut one in white, I didn't like it. I cut one in blue, I didn't like it. I wanted something that toned in with that pattern. So actually having the A5 plate was brilliant because I did an A5 background using the same colours and then die cut from that. And I think that's a really nice tip to remember. If you want to die cut from your sheets, that A5 plate is a great one to have because it's going to give you that larger area to make backgrounds. Moving on, we have got the script stamp being used as like the lino cutting style around this one. We've got them beautiful flowers which come from the succulent set in the Sizex release and again in the bundle. And then we've got our fairy. Now that's our fairy wing that we mentioned. But as you can see, just used as a wing on this one. When we used it on the other card that I shared with you, that was used as a butterfly. Then moving on to the next one, we've got that same flower stamp we've been using from the 2J's release, but stamped on and removed like the lino cutting technique onto the square again. And then in the middle, I've brought in actually what's quite a large stamp. This is one of our Nelly stamps you'll find that we stock. I love these Nelly's picture stamps. And I've literally just stamped it and cut out a square from it and focused in on that part being in the middle here of my butterfly frame. Then moving on, let's have a little look at our next ones. So we'll start off with the circle for our next. So the circle design, again, we have got that lovely five and a half inch panel to work with. We can bring in the cards from this one. Now, look at that butterfly on here. Isn't that beautiful? Same idea again, done from that same sheet that we were talking about, but added on a little bit more colour to this one to bring out that lilac posies, which is around the edges. And again, same idea for the sides. So it just shows you how it doesn't matter what style you've got whether you go for the squares, the circles, or if you're really lucky and go for the complete bundle, how you could be putting these together to make up your pictures, your home decor, your albums. When you're taking prints, it's down to you what you do with the prints. But actually, if this was to be like a multi-fold card with multiple panels, how nice would that be to have the circle, square, circle, square, or patterns like that? So having both is really gonna open up more options for you. Now, not everything is about loads of colours. It can be as simple as this. So this is just that one flower stamp, stamped in red all the way around. This is the beasting from Simon Hurley, stamped all the way around and then taking a print. And isn't that simple, but doesn't that look great? Then on to our last one for the circle. This one again, using that beautiful bee. I love the bee. The bee keeps sneaking in everywhere. And then in the background, we've got that same flower. We're using the same um, beasting ink pad, slippery when wet. And then we've got the blue as well, which I can't remember the name of. Let me have a little look, what's that? Remember me. And I've stamped that round here before taking my print, added in the just for you to finish that one off. Then on to our next plate, we have got our rectangle. Now the rectangle again is a bigger plate, this one is five and a half by seven inches, and we can make the most beautiful backgrounds with this one. So again, rose corner bought in on this one. This again is one of our 2J stamps. You're gonna see that on a lot of the samples. Put around the corners, we've got that leaf stencil used in the background. We've got our soft greens coming through. We've got them lovely blues coming through. And again, focal stamp is that same large lake view stamp that I was just sharing with you, but used in a bigger format. Then on to our next one. This one is again using the cross, which is actually, the die of the week currently and i know we're down to quite low figures on this one but die of the week at the moment and then again roses around the corners same colors from the memento inks being used to make up the background and again with the ink going around the edge of that frame inside and out to give that distressed finish 
Now this is quite nice because I've purposely done this in the same style, same row stamp, same colours of ink, but not done the frame, not taken the ink to the edges to show you how you could have very clean and crisp if you prefer, or you can have more sort of dark and gothic maybe or just stressed by adding that in. Same style, same panel, same colours, same stamps, but very different end result, just depending on what finishing touches you do to them. Then we move on to our last one. Now this of course is our A5 plate. Now the A5 plate to me is a game changer. I need all of them, but this one especially is a, another essential. And when we bring this in, again, cross die of the week with love added on here, stamped around the sides. And this is where the subtlety of the A5 plate comes in. I don't know how well you're gonna see this, but we've got Tattered Rose, which is one of the Distress Oxides down in the background. I've then gone over with Seedless Preserves, Stamping the Flowers, and I've used Remember Me by Simon Hurley through the Cherry Blossom stencil to add in that texture in the background. And then the same purple card has been used through these two layers to match in with the Remember Me. So it's just a really lovely way to make up some quite cool backgrounds. Now I mentioned earlier the die of the week that's coming for this week. I don't even know how much this is yet, and that's the truth, I honestly don't. But I will share this with you, this is a sneaky. This is the die of the week coming up starting on Monday. Uh, I'd say don't wait to order that, get your orders in for the plates now, because we're going to sell out of these, I know we are. So get them ordered and then come back on Monday to make sure you order the die of the week if it's one you like the look of. Now the die of the week, several layers to this one, and I've added on the flower and the little um, leaves from the Sizzex sets that launched last week, the sister and the banner added over the edges. Again, round the edges, we can see the flowers, we can see the script stamp all just coming together. I've really tried to keep it to a limited amount of stamps and stencils and inks so that you can see how they can come together and make different effects per one without you having to have loads and loads. But the more you've got, obviously, the more options you're going to have. Now this card, I didn't want to cover it. I didn't want to use it. I just wanted to keep the background. I love the background. Even down to my finishing touches as such, I've just gone for a vellum bar so you can still see the background and added on just a, a, a very small sentiment because I really liked how this looked. And I'm going to lift this one up for you so you can see it. The depth that has been achieved in this print is gorgeous. And it's simply by laying down lilac ink, going over the top of blue ink through the stencil, stamping around the edges in green for the flower, and then adding on some script in the blue and then taking my print. And I love this one. You could easily add on a couple of butterflies or some flowers or something more if you want to. But to me, it's all about that background. And when we start looking through these cards and we see the different styles and different ways you can build these up, I think you're going to agree that these plates are something that every crafter needs and is going to enjoy playing with and i don't think it matters whether this is the first time you've done mixed media or played with stamps or your billionth time of playing with stamps and mixed media you're going to have fun you're going to make great results and it's pretty much foolproof because you can just keep going back and applying more pressure adding more color doing more techniques until you're happy with it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learnt lots. I hope you're inspired. If you're like me, this is a whole new world. And I just keep thinking of all the different stamps I've got, all the different stencils I've got, all the different bits I'm going to bring together and create them fun backgrounds with. So if you are in that boat with me, you're going to need to go and get your media plates, aren't you? So www.craftmaniacraft.com and then find the YouTube section and then in there will be your media plates actual page. Now, don't forget your bundle. This should be £50 and 45p, but it is reduced at the moment to just £39.99. And that will give you all five of your media plates. You've got your oval, you've got your square, you've got your circle, you've got your rectangle, and you've got your A5 plate, all for £39.99, which, of course, just simple, quick maths, makes them less than £10 each, which is what we want, isn't it? It's the best way to get you a great set to get creative with and be playing with. Don't forget to add on your brayer if that is something that you've seen being used and you think that you need to get. And of course, check out all the new bits and all of the bits and bobs I've been talking to you through throughout today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it even half as much as I have because I've had a blast. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon on the next video. Don't forget, if you do get these and you want to share with us, make sure you jump onto our Facebook group, which is Create with Craft Mania and Jamie Rogers, and share with us what you've been creating with them, because we'd love to see that too. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.